Do you love multitasking and thinking quick on your feet and getting FaceTime with some of the top dogs in the film industry? Maybe one day you want to be a producer. Then learning how to be an office PA is for you. My name is Michelle Caruso. Welcome to my channel where you learn how to get connected and thrive in the film industry. If you're new here, please be sure to subscribe. Thank you to my friend and colleague Sam Pennington and Juan Chung who helped me with this video. Sam has worked as an office production assistant and Juan has worked his way up to be a production coordinator. I'm going to jam pack this video with a lot of great tips. You're going to love my PA survival guide. I'll provide a link below. I'll list some additional terms to know and go into further detail into some great knowledge to have. I highly recommend you watch my video on how to get hired in film and TV. I reveal the number one way to get hired, how to craft your resume, what to wear, and how to prepare for an interview. These tips are vital to you getting your first job, so be sure to empower yourself to land that first gig. PA, or production assistant, is the entry-level position for working in film and TV. There are two types of PAs, set and office. In this video, I'll be covering how to be an office PA. If you're interested in being a set PA, please be sure to watch my video on how to be a set PA. As an office PA, you will work within the production department and the production office. A production office is set up in the city a film or TV show is filming in. They set up the offices and provide a physical hub for cast and crew. Certain positions only work within the production office, while others fluctuate between set and the office. The office will house meetings and is the official record keeper for production. They keep track of all the paperwork, orders, and communicate with the studio and agents. Once a film wraps, the production office will usually need to be cleared out for the next show. Wrap involves creating detailed inventories of where all the filming assets are, like the set pieces, and where all the files are stored. There's always the possibility of reshoots or additional seasons if it's a TV show. Wrapping out a show is an important part of the process, so it can be handed off to new hands if you're not available to return for any reason. You may be booked on a new gig by that time. Within the production office, you'll have some producers that stay on for the run of show. Then you'll have a UPM, unit production manager, a production supervisor, a POC or production office coordinator, a APOC, assistant production office coordinator, production secretary, and office PAs. Someone may even handle travel or there may be a travel coordinator who handles the flights and hotel accommodations for the cast and crew. Okay, this is a beast of a section, so I did my best to separate it out. Take notes, have a notepad and write everything down. Seriously, write everything down. When your boss is going over how to fill out paperwork or how to do something, take great notes. It shows you're listening and you will need your notes for reference. No boss enjoys repeating themselves when they've explained how to do something already. Have your phone and notepad on you at all times. Your phone is important so you don't miss a directive or if someone is trying to find you, you're easy to reach. Having your notepad handy is important because you never know when someone is going to need something from you. You may think, I'm just going to the kitchen to get some water. Then your boss comes in and starts telling you something they need for the next day. You'll be glad you have your notepad. By showing you can be relied upon at all times really makes you stand out. Somehow you never forget anything. The production office is basically the home base for production. It's the hub of information. As a PA, you may be the first person someone meets. Learn names, faces, positions, always be respectful, and figure out who you're speaking with. Learning people's positions is especially important when you do distro, which is distributing various documents. Do some prep work on who the key players are so you're aware of when you meet them. You'll need to know the lay of the land. If you're hired early, you may even be setting up signs in the office so people can get around. You'll have signs for departments and signs per office. 
there will likely be parking signs for labeling spaces too. Production is responsible for creating the phone extension list so they know how to transfer a call to a particular crew member. During filming, the AD team will be handing off a football to the office at the end of each day. The football is an accordion file containing the paperwork summary of the filming day. This can include the PR, production report, exhibit G, the SAG, which is a SAG time report form, payroll paperwork, cast contracts, etc. Doing anything with this paperwork will be more advanced, but as there are learning opportunities, be sure to ask questions and see if you can help. Production is responsible for delivering all current distro to the cast and crew. The film paperwork can be a deep dive, so I'll be going into further detail on these items in another video. The paperwork can include schedules like the prep schedule, one line schedule, day out of days, or the production calendar. Other paperwork includes the crew list, script, updated script pages, call sheets, and signs. As updates occur, they will be printed on different colored paper to reflect a revision has been made. The revision color order is white, blue, pink, yellow, green, goldenrod, buff, salmon, and cherry. Then it's second blue revision, etc. from there. Be sure to get hooked up to the office printer and have your boss show you how to print, copy, scan, load paper, and how to print with the stapler and three hole punch features on. As a PA, you may be helping to keep your boss's wall calendars up to date. You'll want to check the prep schedule, production calendar, and one-liner each time they are released and update as necessary. This task will usually be a hot priority. You don't want your boss to be late for a meeting or scout. Also, you may need to remind your boss of where to be. If this is the case, set an alarm reminder in the morning with the various scheduled appointments. Be sure to do a drive by their office to make sure they've left. If they haven't yet, you may need to let someone know they're running behind. This can be a little tricky to navigate, so just keep asking questions and keep communicating with one another. Production is also there to help all the various departments. You may be asked to do some pretty random tasks. Show your willingness to jump on any task. Do so confidently to show you can be relied upon to carry it out. Production is the main phone line for incoming calls, so phone etiquette is important. An example greeting is, Production, this is Michelle. You don't want to say the name of the show, especially if it's a high profile one. Someone may be digging for information on the location of filming or a celebrity. Be sure you find out with whom you're speaking to before you give out any confidential information. Ask your supervisor how to transfer a call as you'll be doing this often. Production receives all incoming packages and mail and is the go-between the office and set. Production keeps good inventory on what packages are arriving and whom they are given to. Check with your supervisor on this process. Help keep everything stocked. Production is in charge of making sure the office supplies are stocked. You'll want to get with your supervisor on the ordering process, but take some initiative and speak up if you see the supplies running low on something. Keep everyone well fed and therefore happy. Make sure there's always fresh coffee in the morning and after lunch. You may be in charge of crafty or craft service, which are the snacks and beverages available for the cast and crew. There will be a kitchen in each office. Make sure there are healthy options, vegan, vegetarian, and honestly, some non-healthy options too. Stress eating is a thing. Check with your boss on a rough budget and any specifics on what to get. Individual grab and go packages are always great. Don't forget items to consume the food like cups, plates, bowls, and silverware. Whenever there's downtime, ask to learn something new or be sure to tidy up. I realize it may not be your mess, but keeping the environment clean is important. By staying productive, you're showing you're valuable to have around. Find something to do. 
Production will be in charge of getting lunch for certain crew members and may be specific orders per person, a large catering order, or a combination of the two. If you're ordering for a large number, see how many you're ordering for, the budget, and have options for gluten-free, vegans, and vegetarians. Keeping people well-fed really helps morale. Oftentimes, you'll need to go out on a run, which means running out to do an errand. Before you leave, make sure you have your PC and a mileage form. When you're on the run, be sure to send texts to your boss as you arrive and before you leave a destination. Tasks and days can easily shift, so it's helpful for your boss to know where you are at all times. PC stands for petty cash. It's a float of cash that is lent to you to pay for items for the show. You'll need to keep all your receipts for every purchase in return. Every week or when you've spent half of your float, you need to fill out a PC envelope to turn in. Accounting typically needs 48 hours to reimburse your float amount. You don't want to be the PA that suddenly runs out of money. I advise you to count it often how much you have left. This money is your responsibility, so treat it with care. A float for a PA is usually around $500 to $1,000. When you're on the road, you need to keep track of all your runs on a mileage form. This form will be in production and or payroll. Keep a few copies in your car. You'll want to turn in a mileage form each week with your time card. The mileage form will typically have columns for the day, to and from where you're traveling, a place to list the mileage or miles of the run, and a reason for the run. At the bottom, you'll want to add up all your miles for the week. You'll be reimbursed a specific dollar amount per mile. Check with your supervisor or payroll on the dollar amount, then multiply it by your total miles to get the total amount to be reimbursed. You may have noticed I often say, check with your boss. When I was speaking with Sam, he made a really great point that you don't realize how little you know as a PA. Don't assume you know the right answer. Ask questions. Everyone in each studio has their own systems and protocols. It saves everyone time if you ask first rather than fixing something later. I will say there's a fine line you need to walk. Some tasks you do need to figure out for yourself. It's a fast moving industry and no one has time to hold your hand. As a rule of thumb, if it's a routine task that happens often, there's going to be a protocol for it. If it's a random ask or task, you'll likely need to figure it out. You can always present your progress in a task to make sure you're on the right track. Walking this line becomes easier with experience, so when in doubt, ask. A lot of requests can be thrown your way, especially the better you are at your job. Write everything down and prioritize. Keep your boss informed. They may not hear everything you're being asked to do and they may want to delegate the tasks differently. Also, let your boss know if you're overwhelmed. Certain tasks have a hard deadline. If you don't alert someone ahead of time that you're not going to make it, then it turns into a bigger issue with a ripple effect. Don't be the one that drops the ball. We're all there to work as a team, so keep everyone informed. A lot of cast and crew will pass through production. You may hear some confidential information. Be professional and discreet. Often, production may serve as a sounding board. Stay calm and neutral. You don't want to be taking sides, especially when you don't even have a dog in the fight. You may get your hands dirty, so be careful not to get in the middle of something. As an office PA, you will need a reliable car and a working computer, ideally with office suite downloaded. You need to depend on yourself to get to and from work, plus any runs during the day. Also, if you're not in good standing with your license for any reason and it catches up with you, you'll likely be replaced. If it's too inconvenient or unpredictable to work with you, they'll find someone else. To stay earth friendly, I advise having a reusable water bottle and a mug. There will be water jugs for you to fill up at. I'll reiterate, you need to have a notepad. You need to write everything down. A cell phone is needed and ideally a smartphone. You need to be easy to reach. 
Smartphones are handy when you're on runs. Often you'll need to reroute or find something else while you're out. Working in the office, you can dress a bit nicer than if you're on set since you're not exposed to the elements. Plus, you'll be having more interactions with everyone. That may include some studio executives. Keep in mind you may have to move some furniture or large items around, so make sure it's still a workable outfit. I advise wearing closed-toed shoes, which is the safest to have when stepping on set or in a construction mill, so keep yourself safe. I've already mentioned some paperwork and we'll be doing a deeper dive in a separate video, but here are the basics. Football, a paperwork summary of the filming day. Prep schedule. During pre-production, a daily prep schedule will be released which will have all the important appointments in a day. It will list meetings, scouts, whenever someone of note is traveling or starting on the show, rehearsals, fittings, set walkthroughs, etc. Call sheet is a summary of what is filming that day, who is working, and the department needs. Prelim stands for preliminary. Usually a prelim to anything is printed on yellow paper. Sides are the half print sheets of the scenes filming that day. Some areas may be X'd out as an entire scene may not be filming that same day. Production calendar, the calendar for the run of the show. This will show the prep weeks, how many weeks out from filming we are, camera test days, filming days, scouts, production meetings, wrap days, and holidays. One line schedule, also known as the one liner. This is the shooting schedule of what is filming each day of production. Day out of days, this document lists the cast members with their cast numbers in the first columns. Across the top will have the dates of the show. Within the grid, it'll have notations like S for start, when they begin work, W for work, F for finish, meaning they are done with the show, and H for hold. The actor doesn't need to come in for work, but needs to be available. You may also see I for idle, which is similar to hold, but is unpaid, T for travel, or R for rehearsal. Scripts. The script for the show. Often there will be revisions even up to the day of filming. With each revision, the pages will be printed on a different color of paper. As a PA, you may be asked to collate a script, which means replacing any old pages with new pages. Changes on the page will be notated with an asterisk. Crew list. The lists of all the crew with their name, position, and contact info. It'll be organized by department and hierarchy. PC or petty cash is the cash float lent to you for purchasing items on the show. P card. In some cases, you may get a P card, which is a credit card lent to you for purchasing on the show. As a rule of thumb, rentals should always be paid via a check, not in PC or P card. COI or Certificate of Insurance. Production is responsible for issuing COIs to vendors. If this falls under your list of responsibilities, your boss will train you on this process. LND. Lost and damage. There will definitely be something that gets lost or broken on a show. There's a form and process for submitting an LND incident. Check with your boss. Mileage. You will be responsible for filling out a mileage form that will serve as a summary of your runs for the week. Be sure it's turned in weekly for reimbursement. Time card. A time card lists what days and hours you've worked for the week and needs to be turned in at the end of each week. Your boss may fill it out as it can be easier for one person to handle time cards per department. Be sure to ask to be trained on how to fill them out. Perhaps that can be your responsibility. Make sure you sign it and hand it to your boss to get approval signature before it goes to payroll. Check request, also known as a check rec. This will be more advanced, but if you're responsible for paying vendors, you may need to fill out a check request to get them paid. Be sure to turn in an invoice with each check request. If it's the first time paying with a vendor, they will need to supply a W-9, which is a tax form. PO or purchase order. Again, this is more advanced, but if there's an account open with a vendor, to ease payment, you can pay with a PO, which has its own number assigned to it, and you'll supply the vendor with that number. You'll need to fill out and attach a quote to each PO. 
Usually accounting has 30 days to pay a vendor who has an account open. They'll receive a statement at the end of the month. They'll make sure it corresponds with the POs they've received, then cut a check. Any paperwork that needs to be turned in, there will be an approval line for signature. Give it to your boss to get a signature before it gets turned in. Oftentimes, your boss will likely want a copy and scan of everything signed before it's turned in. Check with your boss. A length of day is usually 12 hours. When filming starts, there will likely be a morning and evening shift in the production office. Usually you're working Monday through Friday, but any number of factors can cause weekend work. Especially early on, I advise you to try and be as available as possible. Let your bosses know if you expect any conflicts. I mean, mention it in the interview. Do you have a reason that you'll be unavailable for a stretch of time? When filming starts, your call time or when you need to come into work will likely fluctuate, so check with your boss. I go over this in greater detail on my video on how to get hired in film and TV, but here's the short version. You may start off as a fill-in, additional, or day-playing PA, which means you'll be working on an as-needed basis. Typically, office PAs are hired on full-time as staff, and they are one of the first crew members hired, so the window to get hired can be pretty small. Crew in the office is usually hired during prep and work for about a month, then work during the filming days, and finish out in wrap. Wrap can be a few days, weeks, or months. It depends on your level of experience and the budget of the show. A shooting schedule for a feature film ranges from 30 to 60 days of filming. TV shows or episodic gigs can really vary. A typical narrative half or full hour show can take a week or two to film an episode. You can expect to be hired on a TV show for five to six months. An office PA makes between $150 to $175 per day based on a 12-hour day, or it can be around $650 to $875 per week based on 12-hour days. You're really getting paid in experience and gaining those credits. The sad truth is PAs are underpaid. They are non-union, entry-level positions. You may get a computer rental, but this is usually only the case for larger budget shows. A computer rental is a daily rental for use of your personal computer. Typically, it's $10 a day and maxes out at $500 for the run of the show. This allowance may go on your time card or you may need to turn in a weekly invoice. Check with your boss. Be sure to make the most of your time as a PA. The amount of work has greatly increased now that streaming services are creating their own content. PAs move up much more quickly now, which has its pros and cons. Some people don't learn the full scope of what they need to before moving up. At the same time, you can progress your career faster. Be patient, humble, and thirsty to learn as much as you can as a PA. That's your time to make mistakes. Don't be thirsty just to move up. You need to do the job at hand. If you do that, the offers and bump ups will come. On that same note, I'll mention be okay with doing the small things, like making coffee, cleaning up, or taking out the trash. If you have a bad attitude or simply refuse to do these things, you will not be trusted with more things to do, and you may even get fired or not hired back by that boss. As a boss, I will not ask a PA to do something I haven't done myself. Be humble with getting your start and taking direction. Learn what other departments do. It may help you decide what you want or not want to do. You'll also see how all the pieces come together at the end of the day. You'll be able to communicate more effectively and do your job better by being aware of the bigger picture. As you move up, you'll see how your skills and knowledge build on one another. I also recommend working both on set and in the office. There can be a bit of a knowledge and appreciation gap between these crews. Everyone's role is vital to production. Be respectful and inform yourself on how each crew operates, or at least recognize they're doing something you may not understand, but still valuable to the production. 
Thank you for watching. Be on the lookout for my next video where I do a deep dive into the production and accounting paperwork. I know this is a lot of information, so be sure to download my PA survival guide for quick reference. You'll learn faster by gaining experience and putting this into practice. Please comment below on what you've learned and be sure to share this with anyone looking to be a PA. If this video was helpful, I recommend signing up for my newsletter on my website at michelle-caruso.com so we can stay in touch and grow together. I'll see you next time.